Five times Hollywood humbled the Duke and Duchess of drama. These are my LA Diaries. According to the original Sandringham Summit Agreement, March 31st marks four years since Harry and Meghan gave up their HRH titles and stopped receiving money from British taxpayers. At the time, BBC News reported that Prince Harry and Meghan will retain use of Frogmore Cottage in Windsor, and aides have said they will be in the UK regularly. They will still attend some royal events, but these will not be classed as official duties. The new arrangement will be reviewed next year. Since that report, the Sussexes have lost Frogmore Cottage. The couple hardly visit the UK enough to be categorized as regularly. And royal events are primarily and rarely attended by a solo Prince Harry placed somewhere behind a feather cap. The last four years have been a roller coaster for the Sussexes. According to recent stats shared by CNN, royal net favorability ratings among Americans are as follows. Megan plus eight compared to Catherine's plus 37. Harry plus 19 compared to Prince William's plus 33. In the Battle of Brothers, Prince William is the clear winner stateside. When Harry and Meghan said goodbye to royal duties, they had their sights set on Hollywood. They immediately burst onto the scene with a headline dominating Oprah Winfrey interview and quickly secured millions through content deals with both Netflix and Spotify. But four years on, the tides have turned and Harry and Meghan have gone from golden couple to punchline. Here are five times Hollywood humbled the Duke and Duchess of drama. While there is no doubt that Prince Harry's spare made a splash, the contents of his best-selling book generated plenty of todger talk among America's late night talk shows. The most appalling story found within the pages of spare included Prince Harry applying Elizabeth Arden cream to his hangdown and it reminding him of his mother, Princess Diana. At number five, ABC's Jimmy Kimmel dedicated multiple segments to Prince Harry's crown jewels in his funniest bit, or should I say outrageous. Kimmel joked, the story of Prince Harold and his frozen yogurt slinger is so popular, they're now releasing a version for kids. He then presents a fake children's book to the audience and says, I don't know if you know about this. It's a twist on the princess and the pea. It's called the Prince and the Penis. The Oscars host told the television audience, if the kids are still up, this would be a good time to gather them around the TV because I have the honor of sharing a first read of the new book. Being the book, he begins, at the chilly North Pole, a silly young codger took a walk in the snow and froze his wee todger. The skin was discolored all purple and white. When Harry peered down, it was a terrible fright, Kimmel rapped. Oh, mummy, oh, mummy he cried with a scream. And from then on up high, she appeared with some cream. My poor little prince, put this cream on your willy. It will lessen the ache and make it less chilly, he continued. I refuse to recite the rest, so I'm going to let a computer do it. But mummy, did you not put this on your lips? Oh, yes, my dear boy, and also my nips. But do not delay or your knob be destroyed. But mommy, have you heard about Sir Sigmund Freud? Said Kimmel. Kimmel continued. Then he tucked it back in and back to her cloud. His mother went soaring and said this aloud should ever. You have icy chills on your heart on just give it a rub with Elizabeth Arden. He recited. And everyone lived happily ever after in the castle next to Oprah's house. Kimmel finished. Talk about a nightmare ever after. At number four, Saturday Night Live, or SNL, is a comedy fixture for the American late night audience, and they do not hesitate to take swipes at Harry and Meghan from the Big Apple. SNL is pieced together by iconic live sketches acted by a group of comedians and high-profile celebrities. The show was created by Lauren Michaels and premiered all the way back in 1975 under the title NBC's Saturday Night. SNL sketches poke fun at pop culture and politics and has created stars out of people like Will Ferrell, Jimmy Fallon, Steve Martin, and Martin Short. In fact, comedy legends Martin Short and Steve Martin were two of the first to take the Sussexes to task as guest hosts, joking during their opening monologue that, similar to Harry and Meghan, no one is rooting for us, but you'll tune in to watch anyway. During a recent SNL Weekend Update sketch, comedian Colin Joss brought up the upcoming Suits LA spinoff. While addressing rumors of Markle's return, he joked, Suits will focus on Meghan Markle's character, 
struggling to balance her legal career while also caring for an unemployed immigrant as a photo of Prince Harry flashed across the screen. Savage. At number three, no one loves trophies more than Harry and Meghan. What they don't like? A-listers laughing at their expense at Hollywood's leading award shows. Comedian Joe Coy got one of his biggest laughs at this year's Golden Globes with a dig at the Sussexes saying, it turns out Harry and Meghan Markle were still getting paid millions of dollars for doing absolutely nothing. And that's just by Netflix. The camera zoomed in on Netflix's CEO, who himself cracked a smile. While hosting last year's Grammy Awards, comedian Trevor Noah took his own swipe at the pair. He said James Corden is a 12-time Emmy winner and the host of The Late Late Show. He's also living proof that a man can move from London to L.A. and not tell everyone about his frostbitten penis. At number two, comedian Chris Rock completely disemboweled the Duke and Duchess of Sussex during his selective outrage Netflix special, I wouldn't repeat even half of Rock's routine, but Rock's takedown begins when he insists that everyone is trying to be the victim, including people who know beep well they're not victims. Of Megan's Oprah allegations, the comedian argued, sometimes it's just some in-law beep. She's complaining. I'm like, what the beep is she talking about? At number one, drum roll, please. You knew it was coming. South Park. The notorious Comedy Central cartoon had no chill when they set their sights on Harry and Meghan in their February 2023 episode titled The Worldwide Privacy Tour. The show viciously places the pair on a TV talk show called Good Morning Canada, where the prince holds a sign that reads, We Want Privacy, and his wife, standing next to him, holds a sign that reads, Stop Looking at Us. Meghan's character is described as a sorority girl actress, influencer, and victim. Meanwhile, the prince is seen marching over to the house of his neighbor, Kyle, and rubbing his blue todger across the front window while yelling, have some respect for people's privacy. It was next level. Honorable mention, Family Guy. Seth MacFarlane's animated sitcom took their punch at the Sussexes in October of 2023. Tanning by the pool, Prince Harry's butler approaches and says, sir, you're millions from Netflix for no one knows what. Harry's character nonchalantly replies, put it with the rest of them. Suddenly a phone rings and Megan's character says, babe, it's time to do our daily $250,000 sponsored Instagram post for Del Taco. Coming soon to an American Riviera Instagram page near you. Which joke did you like the most? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you smash that like button, share with a friend, and subscribe to Talk TV on YouTube. Thanks for watching. I'm Kinsey Schofield.